Okay, up next, we have a fireside chat. We're gonna be inviting two different people to the stage here right away. So Ishita, welcome, and Ellen, welcome to you too. So, hi, hi, hi hello. <laughs> you have like coordinated backgrounds with the yellow and the green. Oh, it looks too oh, good together, you two. <laughs> thank you. We put yeah. a lot of work into it. <laughs> Perfect, I'm glad, yeah. So Ashita Majumdar is the VP of Data Analytic Platforms at eBay, and she's going to be in a fireside chat here moderated by Ellen. And Ellen Morton is the VP of Data Analytics Platforms um, at eBay. So connected between a few different roles there at eBay. Um, and I'm going to, oh, I'm going to tell you a little bit more about them here. So let me make sure I have everything right here. Um, Ishita, I have that you are the VP of Data Analytics at eBay in the CTO organization. You lead a diverse team of data engineers and scientists and software developers. Am I on the right track here? You're perfectly <laughs> on the right track. Perfect. Um, you have a 20 year industry veteran here with deep experience in architecture, strategy, product management, and data modeling with different experience at Telco, so part of Motorola, IBM, Huawei, um, and different startup accelerators too, which is really exciting because we have a different mix of audience always at these events with Women Tech Network between the startup kind of communities and women working in larger tech organizations and our male allies too. Um, so really happy um, to have you here with us. I know you've done a lot of different work in women in tech and through a community of inclusion at eBay, um, and I'm sure we'll get a chance to hear a little bit about that today. Now, Ellen, Ellen is in fact, correction here, the chief of staff and head of business operations for Ashita as the VP of data analytic platforms at eBay. So she drives initiatives and programs across the global team of 300 people and works closely with leaders and tech partners to plan and execute their organizational priorities. So Ellen comes from a background in marketing, communications, and operation roles. She's been in Silicon Valley companies also for over 20 years. So we're getting amazing breadth of experience here tonight. Um, and there, although there might not be time to fill in audience questions, we're happy to take questions offline. And so we'll make sure that you have connection info to the two of them and we'll add in their LinkedIn profiles and things like that. But for now, I know they have a lot to cover. So let me pass it over to you, Ellen, to help introduce what we're gonna talk about here today. Sounds great. Thank you, Margo. Um, and congratulations to all the award winners today. We're so happy to be here with you guys. Mm -hmm. Um, so to give you guys some context for this talk, this is called Take a Chance on Your Career Growth. And uh, I've been working with Ashita for about six months now as her chief of staff. And in that time, I've gotten a chance to hear her personal story two times now. Um, and there's just been several decision points. She's had several opportunities throughout her career to take a chance and make a choice. Um, and other people have taken chances on her in return. And so we thought that her story was an inspiring one that we could share with you. Um, to help you see how your own career path is one of your greatest assets. So thank you, Ashita, for inviting me to moderate this chat with you. Well, thank you, Ellen. Uh, I couldn't uh, think of a better interviewer or a better person to chat about my personal journey with. Uh, thank you to the organizers for inviting me and giving me the opportunity. And, and then I want to thank the audience uh, for joining in. I can't see you but I want to thank you in advance for joining in, for spending 20 minutes of your valuable time. And last but not the least, I want to congratulate all the award winners uh, for Women in Tech in of 19, 2021. Great. All right, so let's dive in then, Ashita, to your journey. So why don't you tell us a little bit about your early life and how you came to love STEM? Well, most of you can guess, my early life was in India in a middle-class family where academics was a big thing to emphasize and focus on. But my personality, and you may not, uh, a lot of people say, what, when they hear this? My personality was very quiet and very introverted. And I kind of stayed in the back seat and the back bench and did not want the limelight or completely hid under uh, my desk and was fearful if a teacher would call on me to ask, answer questions. And I was an indifferent student till sixth grade happened. And I had this awesome math teacher who just made a light bulb glow up in my head when she started teaching geometry. Because I love painting, I love drawing. And when drawing combines with numbers and I see shapes and figures, 
it kind of started making sense and it started taking an interest in science, math, and because all the other subjects were important in order to pass from grade to grade, I had to take an interest in academics in general. So I became active. I became um, a studious, more studious than what I was before. And then when I went to college, I kind of knew I wanted to do math. And this is so going against the grain or the norm of middle class Indian students where the focus in those times were medicine and engineering. These were the only two professions which were thought of as successful, uh, makes you get opportunities. And I completely went against the grain. And I, you know, I, I, in retrospect, I thank my parents for standing by me and supporting me and saying, okay, you are the outlier, you're not the norm, go for it. We will support you. And we went through all the uh, degrees in college and grad school as well, where I did applied math and optimization. Okay, so that's pretty straightforward of a journey, more or less. And the next part of your journey is what you're calling the jungle gym stage or the zigzagging part of your career. So during the zigzagging, at what point would you say was the transformation part in your journey? Ah, I do want to emphasize that my career was not the traditional go up rung by rung in a corporate ladder. And part was by choice, part was because uh, there were opportunities and people took chance on me. My career started as a performance engineer, as a software developer in a telco company, Motorola in those days. And I continued what I loved doing at school, optimization of uh, various uh, performance scenarios of a switch that we were selling at that time. I loved it. It was uh, something I, I wanted to do. I knew there was an impact. I knew customers were helped with. So, But soon, I started exploring the voice over IP that happened during uh, my tenure at Motorola, like uh, we were talking about IP, the internet world, and how does a cellular world transform to the internet world, and how do voice over IP calls happen? And slowly, I realized that, oh, I have drifted from development and engineering to architecture and doing call flows all day long, figuring out how to do uh, an internet call on the phone making sure it is still good quality and it is fast and it reaches every every corner of the world. And then people start calling me architect. And I'm like, okay, so I zigzagged into architecture unknowingly. And uh, things were going well. I was uh, learning new uh, systems. I was learning new protocols. I was learning uh, a different kind of uh, uh, electrical engineering, which I did not have a chance to uh, study at, at school. And when all things were going well, I did a transformation. I quit work. And this is what I would say my professional transformation, but which was done because of me. I chose to go to B school and learn about a more comprehensive part of the business, including finance and strategy and negotiation. And that I thought was a riskiest decision, as did my parents, as did my friend, because everything was going well. Why would he quit and why would he go to B school, not knowing what the other side looked like? Um, so I would say it taught me how to be courageous, how to be risk taking. And at the end, after B school, when I came back, I had to I had to start a little a down in the ladder, if you think about it, and and demoted myself to become a biz dev, uh, and, uh, biz dev person and to start uh, doing uh, early stage acceleration of, of research ideas in Motorola, which is completely different, 180 different from what I did before. So that was one of the biggest uh, transformations I can think of my career, which worked out, but I did make a choice to learn from it by demoting myself. And in the jungle jing vocabulary, I came down. Yes. Okay, so you're mentioning that was a professional transformation point for you. Do you have any transformations that might be more personal as you zigzag? Yeah. Yes, uh, Ellen, as you're, as you're asking me this question, I'm thinking, in my personal life, I took a decision to stay at home with my daughter when my daughter was born. This was 2008, nine, and while I that was a completely, again, my choice, my choice to stay back. Now, why do I call it a transformation world? While I was um, on leave, um, at some point of time, I was thinking, well, I miss work. I miss technology. I do miss uh, what I did. What if I went back part time? 
And what is a better way to go back part time? But consultancy, right? Mm -hmm. Consultancy, you can choose to do a project for three months. And then, so I was an independent consultant, and IBM hired me. And I had to go to Seoul uh, for a couple of months. So there were two things which did not go well with that experience. And in retrospect, I think that was one of the chances I took, which did not work out well. Uh, it was nonstop travel. And mm. I, wasn't, I wasn't looking forward to it, leaving a baby at home. And the second one was, it was too prescriptive. And by that time, I was senior enough for me to say that, let me define the strategy. Let mm. me take it all the way to its completion. And uh, I will do a good job because I've had experience. But because I, again, started at a lower rung in consultancy, at a different time, at a different age, it would have been an amazing experience. But for that time, and for the amount of experience I'd already had, I felt very um, constrained. I felt uh -huh. that I wasn't given the empowerment and the independence to take it all the way towards completion. And I'm big into execution. Yes. So just leaving it as a strategic level was like, oh my gosh, this, this job is half done. Mm -hmm. I don't want to take the strategy and, and make it all the way to reality. And I wanted to do that. And consultancy ended right there. So it, again, consultancy is a fabulous, fabulous profession for many. I think the choice was wrong for me because of two factors, the time of my life and the state of my career. Yeah. Do you consider that chapter in consulting to be a failure? I think so. So okay. as with every chance I took, and there were many I'm not talking about, but think about my career as a series of chances I took upon and people took upon me. It, it is bi-directional. Mm -hmm. I took a chance when a new opportunity came up, I raised my hand, but my managers, my colleagues, my boss also said, hey, she's there. Give her mm -hmm. something new. She's a lifelong learner. She's always looking to some, do something new. Mm -hmm. Some of those chances did work out. Some of those didn't. And I would say this was a failure. This was a chance I took and it didn't work out. Mm -hmm. But if you take the sum of all the chances, if you take the sum of all the opportunities, I think in totality, it was enormously beneficial for my personal and professional growth because yeah. I grew horizontally. I mm -hmm. learned about business. I mm -hmm. learned to go uh, deep and I learned to go wide. I did so many um, areas brand new. I learned to be comfortable to be uncomfortable. Does that make sense? Right. Yeah, definitely, definitely. And, and I kind of got more confidence, more risk-taking courage, more public speaking opportunities, executive level communication. All those happened just because I did a zigzag a lot of times, every time raising my hand or somebody giving me a chance, going into an unknown area, mm -hmm. to a point that I think I'm very confident now that there are more chances awaiting me perhaps, and it could be in any domain, it could be in any industry, but I think I can I can uh, take a chance and make it happen. Yeah, and it sounds like that consulting gig um, gave you more insight to what you do want to do and kind of led you more the direction that you wanted to go. Uh, and then you got back into full-time work, I believe, just getting more into big data. Yeah, and I, now I do have to say, and I don't know if any of, any of the people in the audience faced this, it was very hard getting back to a full-time job. Mm -hmm. It was um, after maternity leave, uh, things were hard. I, I interviewed in so many places and there were so many rejection letters. Uh, during my leave, I was also a EIR at a tech incubator and I had a fantastic time advising startups on their uh, honing their pay, pitch, doing the business model, financial modeling for them. And that was great, but it wasn't a full-time opportunity. Mm -hmm. uh, and so I said, okay, I want to go back to work for financial reasons as well. Um, as well as for my career growth, I want to go back full time. And it took me a while before I found a full time job in a tech field through my network uh, in a telco company, Huawei. Um, and that's where I came across big data because I wasn't hired to do uh, cellular anymore. I was hired to do, there's a lot of data which is coming out of uh, not only customer data, but also of the log data, the operational data of all the telco systems. What can we do with it? And we were building data stacks. I was working with academic institutions to get do POCs. And it was completely new. Mm -hmm. And it also taught me for the first time, my team was entirely in China. And it taught me how to work with China, 
how to work with the geographical distributed teams, um, how to learn their culture. I travel to Senjan every quarter, uh, so four times or even more. And the reason I did it is to immerse myself in the Chinese working culture. It was an A plus team. And uh, to make sure that the communication, the, the, the conversation, the networking uh, was there, even though we were separated by continents. Mm -hmm. And you said that one of those uh, conferences you were speaking at during your China gig led to your eBay position and somebody took a chance on you yes. at the time, right? Yes. So um, we heard, we were doing some pioneering big data work in, in uh, Huawei. Uh, we, I spoke at conferences. I spoke at internal conferences. I think my team wrote a paper and we were talking about it one time when somebody from eBay reached out and said, hey, um, we are looking for somebody who can lead our data portfolio in products, just the, the, the data products portfolio. Are you interested? And really it started as a conversation mostly based on oh what have you done in big data i know huawei is doing great stuff you also started an innovation center how did you do that so it was friendly conversations uh, with folks in ebay till i was offered this position of saying we have a very big uh, data portfolio all the way from infrastructure platforms services um, can you come and put together a strategy put together the execution model and lead the product management team and that's how Somebody took a chance on me. Mm -hmm. I took a chance on this job opportunity, and I came into eBay. And mm -hmm. even within eBay, and you know this very well, even within eBay, I've been seven years here. Yep. Um, not only did I uh, do data product management, then an opportunity came over and said that, would you like to be the product lead of the entire tech stack? An entire tech stack means data center, cloud, networks. Um, uh, service framework, application framework, much more than data. And I said, sure, I'm going to extend, I'm going to learn, I'm going to scale my team. And as I said, I grew uh, horizontally, I grew vertically. Mm -hmm. So an opportunity came up to lead both data engineering and product. So think about the one layer in the tech stack, which is called data. Yeah. So can you lead data analytics platforms and uh, data analytics tools and services, what we do? And I put up my hand and I said, I would like to try it. And I was already recommended by my predecessor. So that helped. Mm -hmm. And So here I am, you could say a second job in eBay, uh, but going from the tech stack product management to engineering and product um, uh, as, as is my current role. Great. And I like how you were saying earlier that somebody was taking a chance on you on the other side. There is a two-sided equation. And I mean, honestly, you took a chance on me. Like I'm a living example of someone you took a chance on. And, you know, I was working remotely um, before this for a couple of years. I had two young kids at home and just thought that I needed to have a flexible behind the scenes job. I saw the chief of staff opening. I thought, you know what, let's take a gamble. Let's step it up a little bit. And I don't know that you would have hired a remote chief of staff, you know, prior to COVID, um, but you took a chance on me. And I honestly, I feel like I have my career identity back. So thank you for that, Ashita. And Ellen, I want to thank you for taking a chance on me, taking a chance on eBay and the team. As you know, my entire leadership team is almost brand new. And to the audience, I want to say uh, two things in, in closure. Um, my journey looks very different from other successful journey, journeys. There is no one model. Any journey could be successful. This is my story. But at the end, whatever path you choose, take it, own it and be accountable for your decisions. All the decisions may not work out and that's okay. Go out of your comfort zone, learn how to be uncomfortable in discomfort and mm -hmm. spread your wings and be more impactful with every one of these steps. Ellen and Women in Tech, thank you for giving the opportunity for sharing my story and uh, please send me questions offline. I would love to connect with each one of you. Okay. Thank you both so much, Ellen, Ashita. You make a great pair, not just the match of your backgrounds, but also <laughs> the quality of the conversation. Thank, so you. thank you so much for being with us here today. Thank you. Thank you for inviting us. Bye, Bye for now. Bye.